Welcome. Welcome to Whose Line Is It Anyway, the programme which combines the fine traditions of British theatre, the excitement of American movies and all the best in comedy and improvisation, and turns them all into half an hour of cheap television. <laughs> Featuring tonight uh, the man who makes Sean Connery look like James Bond, Steve Frost. <laughs> and introducing the man who makes James Bond look like an all-action hero, Eddie Izzard. Also the man who makes an all-action hero look like a waste of space, Greg Proops. <laughs> and finally the man who makes a waste of space look like an attractive alternative, Ryan Styles. <laughs> Okay, now, let's see, uh, we, uh, we start with a game called Remote Control. Now, the simple idea between this programme is that all four contestants have to come on down. They all represent a different television programme, and for some reason, each television programme is dealing with the same topic. So, let's first of all decide what the topic should be. What a sort of general topic that TV programmes might be about? Fish Hugh Grant, nice idea, but uh, <laughs> I don't think we could uh, do more than five minutes with him, could we? Uh, no. <laughs> Not that amount of money. Uh, Another suggestion. Fish, yes. so, global warming. Global warming. A good sort of sensible. Fish. Lobsters. <laughs> lobsters. You're determined. Good. <laughs> and the lobster vote got just got it over the uh, over the global warming. Anyway, Steve, you're the Bill. You know the famous uh, cop program. Um, Eddie, you're Newsnight. Uh, Greg, you're a game show, and Ryan is a cookery show. So it's a nice easy one for you. <laughs> and the subject is lobsters. Lob lobsters. Yeah. Okay. I'll start with you, Greg. Hello, good evening, and welcome to Ouch! Stop Pinching My Butt! <laughs> this is the... Steve. We've got a crayfish in the third cell, Sarge. <laughs> it belongs to the Cray Brothers, you know? <laughs> oh, pathetic. Eddie. And if we got the lobsters in and they voted all this way, if we take a look at the chart now, we can see exactly how this is spread out if all the MPs voted lobster in the next election. <laughs> Craig. Oh, I'm sorry. That means you're going into the pot of boiling water. Ryan. While cooking lobster, it's not really important to set your oven too high because of global warming. Eddie. And now we're going over to the lobster live in uh, the water. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, I'm here. It's way too hot. It's too hot in the water. And, and uh, are you going to enjoy being cooked? I don't like being cooked. <laughs> Greg. Let's just cut over to the scoreboard. In fact, let's scuttle over and see what the score is. <laughs> hey, that's crabs four, lobsters five. Time to break off some legs and go to the final round. Eddie. If we have a look at uh, tomorrow morning's lobsters, uh, this is the sun. There's a great big lobster on the front there. Lobsters move out. Lobsters are eaten here in the Telegraph. <laughs> Steve. All right, Sergeant, take your lobster into the interview room and uh, grill him for us, mate. <laughs> Excellent, move on. Well done. Now, a lot of people, a lot of people have been asking me as to how I score these games, and to be honest, I don't know either. As we go into a game called Film and Theatre Styles, yes, yeah, so Steve and Eddie had to come on down. I'll give you a scene in just a moment. But first of all, I'd like some suggestions, please, of some film styles, theatre styles, even TV styles for uh, them to break into. Anyone got any good suggestions? Ivor the Engine, Groucho, these are great suggestions. <laughs> Ivor the Engine, we've never done Ivor the Engine, I don't think. <laughs> what about Thomas the Tank Engine? What? <laughs> Dirty Harry, do have occasionally done those, I might not reach that. French subtitles. French subtitles. What, are they going to need a marker pen and some paper? <laughs> <laughs> they French French subtitles, they're just French films that are shown over here with subtitles. <laughs> they don't make them like that. Tacky porn. Tacky porn, yes, that's it. <laughs> Tacky porn is just what you happen to be reading at the moment. Okay, let's. Eddie, you are Hannibal taking his, uh, talking to his elephant keeper, who is played by Steve. You know Hannibal and. Uh, I know, Arsenal? Carthaginians. Yes, excellent. You just Over the Alps. In, That's a knee operation, isn't it? Away you go. <laughs> that was the Carthaginians. <laughs> I'll tell you, they're not going to go up them bleeding mountains, they're knackered. <laughs> We've got on our own there, sitting, waiting for us to come over. I've got 4,000 troops and they want them on elephants. No, it's all good. How are you going to get an elephant up the house? You'll never get him in the old ski lifts, will you? Ivor the engine. <laughs> well, well, we can put them on your chain then. <laughs> well, right. could, uh... That's a lot to do. Will it take the strain? We'll put them on the fist in your grill way. <laughs> Will it take the strain? It'll take the strain. 4,000 people, 200 we'll elephants. Them. We'll load them at flank like a blank eye. Yeah. And we'll take them up and we'll stop halfway up and I will have to go behind and push them up. Ah, there's practice. And if they run... 
uh, French with subtitles. You know, les elephants sur le menton. The elephants can't go there, Please, I say, in front of the road. Ah, Jen, it'll be okay. Mais pour te donner, je savais ces trites de vengeance, les les trites froides. Okay. Okay, Captain Scarlet. Okay, Angels One, you get all the elephants up there. We'll just bomb them. You'll never get my elephants up there. The strings won't take them. Okay, stop there. That's good enough of that. Yes, how we work. Whoa. Well, the scores are. Scores are absolutely level, at least they were when we started. If you go into a game called Film Dubs, for Ryan and Greg to come on down, they have to add a new soundtrack to a piece of film from which the original soundtrack has been removed. And uh, this story I'd like to do is you've forgotten to do something. And if this film, when it starts, which will be in three seconds from now. Darling? Yeah, you're French, aren't you? Just like that. Oh. <laughs> Why did I marry you? Uh, I could have married. Oh, 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 you can let me sleep a little bit longer, can you? <laughs> Two more minutes is all I need. Oh, my God, but you're ugly. <laughs> oh, my God. <coughs> hey, you think I'm ugly? ugly? Well, look at the floor. <laughs> put your clothes on. You've forgotten to put your robe on. Yeah, I should put it over my head so I don't have to look at that ugly muggy. <laughs> oh, is that so? Well, if I. <laughs> I wish his tie was around your neck so I could just squeeze it tight. Wrap it around your neck to cut off all the air to that ugly mug of I should have married your brother. He's the successful one and he has all his hair. I said to like, oh, I forgot to talk about it. <laughs> oh, God, I love that man. Ah, <laughs> uh, very good. Yeah. And that was not only funny, it also captured the, the original film, so brilliant there, so uh, 95 points each. We go on to a game called Old Job, New Job. Um, this is going to have uh, Eddie, Ryan and Steve in it. Ryan is a dental nurse. Uh, Eddie is a patient. He's gone to have his uh, teeth fixed or whatever, a dentist. And Steve will come in and he's the dentist. But the idea of this game is that he used to be something else. He, in fact, he used to be a builder. And he has to subtly indicate by the power of his acting uh, some notion that possibly he used to be a builder in his past. And if he manages to do that, we'll get through the scene. Away you go. I'm sorry, that's always coming off. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, uh, that, uh, that, uh, I can't understand a word you're saying. Uh, that, uh. Oh, yes, it is. It's right there. Oh, yeah, no, I was all right, boy. A bit of plaque Who did your last villain, eh? <laughs> Who did your... Ain't the old last gonna have to come out? Yeah. It's a bit damp down here. Who did... Oh, I can't believe it's it. The pack, it's got a um, yeah. filling, yeah. and yeah. it's, giving, it's yeah. giving me pain. 300 quid. That's <laughs> the best I can do. Why have we got, got three other jobs on at the moment? I'll maybe fit you in Tuesday. Can you... Uh, more sugar, lad. What are you I'm playing here? <laughs> yeah. Well, of course I can. Of course I can knock you out, but that costs more. It costs you a lot more, I'm afraid. Well, just, just do the filling. Oh. Anesthetic, Doctor. <laughs> You're gorgeous! <laughs> You're bleed gorgeous! Thank you very much, Okay. Well. Well. And Steve shoots into a shock lead there with some of the uh, cleverest witticisms and the, the one of the funniest cracks I've ever <laughs> come across now. <laughs> For one of your jokes, as we go on to a news report, and this is going to feature Greg Proops as an anchor man in a TV studio. Eddie will be an expert with him in the studio. Out in the field, uh, there will be Steve, who will be a reporter interviewing such people who's come along, who all of whom will be played by Ryan. But it's not a regular news story. Well, it's sort of a news story, a fictional one. It's Gulliver in Lilliput. Um, so I hope you're mugging up on that, Greg. Away you go when the news report music comes in. Is it an abscess, do you think? Ah. No. Good evening. <clears throat> I'm red when excited. <laughs> Welcome to Once Upon a Time, the show where we go back and look at the innuendos and lies behind fairy tales. Gulliver in Lilliput. He was a big man in a small place. We have a doctor who's both an expert on diminutiveness. <laughs> condition of being gargantuan. <laughs> Dr. Pengo, doctor, nice to have you with us here this afternoon. Nice to be here. 
<laughs> Tall people have always liked to be strapped down, and that's what that story's all about. Right? We have someone out in the field. It's Pond Scumley. He's got a live report coming now. Pond! Hello, Red. Okay, um, now, first off, uh, you're pretty big for a small person. <laughs> I'm Jojo the mutant small person. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's a bit a little unfair, isn't it? I mean, you're about as big as Gulliver, and no, you... not as big as Gulliver. Yeah, no, he... nowhere near him. Was he the biggest you ever saw? He was a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Pond. That's okay. Doctor Gulliver also went to Brobdagnia, where he was the smallest person there. How does that feel? Well, obviously to have a whole, <laughs> obviously to have a whole reversal thing. Well, when you're the, the smallest person in, in, in a really large society, is, is really kind of hellish. But then you do rule the world. Ah. Yeah, small people rule the world. Do they? They do. How do small people rule the world, Doctor? By pressing buttons. <laughs> it's just that simple. Pond Scumley's in my ear. Pond, chucking it over to you, Brahe. Okay, well, I got very lucky got hold of Gulliver here. Hello, 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 hello. I do that myself. Let me get rid of those, uh, little, <laughs> those people off the stuff. <laughs> So, what was it like being tied down for all that time? Oh, I wasn't tied down that long. I broke free, uh -huh, and the uh -huh. island was mine. Uh -huh. I love the little people. Uh -huh. I like to paint them all different colors uh -huh. and play snooker. Uh -huh. oh, <laughs> tie them all on pieces of rope and use them as a sexual aid. Uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you ever have any accidents, like stand on them at all? Oh, they're always getting on their foot. You're picking them out of everywhere. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Uh -huh. oh, there's oh, my there. name. Oh, okay, Red. Let's go for you. Doctor, any safety tips for the children who might be traveling to places where they might end up being tied down by a group of small people? Yep, take scissors. <laughs> That's all the time we have. We'll be back next week when we talk about Beauty and the Beast. Should women date sewer dogs? <laughs> Welcome back with the, with the shock news that electricity can kill you. As we go into a game called Props, uh, Greg and Ryan, I want to come up with many different ways of using this item or these items in the time available. Okay. Uh, while the other pairing, Steve and Eddie, come up with ideas for that. And I'll buzz between the two pairings, starting over there with you, Ryan and Greg. Well, I've been growing this fingernail for about 14 years now. <laughs> If we look closely, we can see the giant snails moving through the undergrowth. Captain, I am picking up a strange energy source emitting from the planet. <laughs> Offside. Hi, Greg. <laughs> Hi, Ryan. <laughs> okay, I know you're not loaded. I'm gonna kill you anyway. <laughs> Need a caddy for you again? <laughs> yes, well, I'll just blow dry a bit at the top here oh, as well. <laughs> to my left, you can see the exotic Irish elk. Pick on, pick on. Landing gear down. Not only do I have blood in my urine, but it's damn cold out here. <laughs> Uh, yes, I wanted to be filmed in silhouette because some people know who I am. <laughs> okay, stop there. That's quite enough of that. Yeah. Whoa. Very, 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 very fine collection of props. Shame we couldn't do anything with them. As we go on to a game called Sound Effects for Ryan and Greg, they can act out a scene, uh, very straightforward, but they have to incorporate some sound effects to be played in as we go along. The scene likes to do those lifeguards on the beach. Away you go. I don't know. I don't know. I can't turn. My neck is too muscular. <laughs> what neck? <laughs> hey, you look great, Bill. You sure look is good. A lot of chicks out there today. I hope someone. <laughs> Get a load of the Indian girl. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think she likes you. I think so too. Here, I'll turn on the radio and see if we've got any emergency calls. <laughs> Wow, I love that modern jazz. Me too. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking of leaving the lifeguard business. Really? Yeah, it's just not challenging enough for me anymore. I mean, what do we say? One, two people here a week? Sure. What are you going to do? I don't know. I thought I'd start a new line of occupation. Maybe become uh, an organ donor. Sure. <laughs> I hear there's good money in it. I can see that. Yeah. Well, good luck to you on your new job. Thanks very... 
What's you, that? You hear something? <laughs> My God, there's somebody drowning and choking on something at the what? same time. No, there's... <laughs> Sounds like you're sucking on a cat of some kind. Don't worry, I'll save him, Bill. Red alert. Red alert. I got a submarine! We'll pull it up! Yeah! The crew seems to be happy about it. Oh, uh, very good. Yes. Uh, that, I think that I think it deserves a lot of points, rather more than I'm actually going to give you. As we go on to film trailer, uh, now Greg is going to be doing the uh, the voiceover for a trailer for a film, and the other three will be acting out bits of the film that he's trailing. If you'd like to go over there, you three, and uh, we're playing some music to help things along. Uh, we need a title. Uh, let's call it the creature from. Can you think, end that title? The creature from. Essex. The police. There's a good Pluto or Essex, but I think oddly enough, Essex is funnier. Uh, it's, Mind you, I've never been to Pluto. Uh, so the, the Pluto from Essex. No, the creature. <laughs> the creature from Essex. Take it away. Just outside of London is a place where women with enormous hair and white stilettos go to bars and dance around their handbags. It's called Essex. Inside a laboratory late at night, a creature was created so heinous, so vile, that all it could do was go to bars and try to pick up guys with short hair and squatties. <laughs> Who can forget that fateful night in the laboratory? Live! Live! <laughs> Her name was Tracy. The first man she met was the first man she wanted to make love to. Ah, oh, darling! Oh! Oh! <laughs> but it all went horribly wrong. Then the police were called out, chasing Tracy across the countryside in her blue Ford Sierra. She only stopped twice, once at an off-license, and later at a cosmetic counter to buy white lip gloss. <laughs> Who could forget that night on the cliff when Tracy found her second victim? Oh! <laughs> yes, she repeated the same action over and over again. Go for Essex, didn't you? <laughs> the Creature from Essex, starring Lance Chinstrong as Dr. Wogelthorpe. Chunkly as Essex Man. Hear him, Quip. <laughs> you going my way, baby? <laughs> and introducing Fiona Lamb as Tracy. She was a woman who had only the language of love at her fingertips. Hello. It's Essex. Come and see you near you. Okay, thank you very much. Well done. Yes, well done. Yes, I'd love to see that. Well done. Yes, I know what I'm doing next Saturday night. And if we go on now to a game called Moving People, this is for Steve and Ryan, if I'd like to come on down. And uh, they have to act this scene, but they can only move when they're moved by a volunteer from the studio audience. So I need two volunteers. I'll so go and volunteer them now. Just uh, find a couple of people who might... Uh, uh, you, you'd like to do this, wouldn't you? Can I ask your name, first of all? Yeah, it's Nikki. Nikki, come on. Hello, Nikki. Do you come on? And your name? Carolyn. Carolyn. OK, Carolyn. Come on, Nikki. You'd like to stand behind uh, the improviser of your choice. Those oranges might clash, so you might have to uh, stand... <laughs> That's it, fine. So, now, just stand behind them. Uh, no, no, uh, no funny business. All you have to do is just, just put them in a... <laughs> just put them in a position. You can move their arms, legs, head, anything. Just put them in a fixed position for the moment. All right. OK. Oh, both exactly the same, bizarrely. Right. <laughs> OK, now, while we're doing this scene, they can only move when you move them. If you move them in a nice sort of... De no, just hang on, hang on a second. Right, OK, so there's two firemen at the scene of a fire. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've caught the atmosphere already, I feel. So away you go, they have to react to your movements, you react to their what they I say. I forgot my bleeding helmet! <laughs> I can't go now without my helmet! What a coinkidink! <laughs> so have I! My hair is getting hot. Where did we put them then? I don't know, let me just uh, look in the truck here, I might have left it in the side panel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I... I I forgot what rank you are. Let me guess. Uh... <laughs> just, just, just rub it over me up and Three stripes. Come on, three stripes. What is it? Remember when I started here? I had boobs this big. <laughs> well, you guys never made fun of me then, did you? Big <laughs> hunkers. Remember they came out around here? Yeah, but we used them to put out a lot of flies. Do you remember? Hi, Gary. Hi, <laughs> oh, uh... you. Hey, 
Hey, are we going to go in and get that fire or what? Give me a high five. Okay, high here it comes. Five. Let's get the fire. High five. 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 Yes, I, that uh, caught all the excitement of a major fire tragedy. Just a static at times, but uh, yes, uh, 95 points to you two and uh, 300 to the volunteers from the audience. As we move on to a game called uh, Party Quirks, this is a game that's going to feature Greg Proops as the host of a party. All the others are guests of the party. <laughs> in front of each of the guests is an envelope inside the envelope is a suggestion for a strange way of behaving, a quirky way of behaving. And the idea of the game is that Greg has to guess or work out uh, what quirk has been allocated to each of the other contestants. So they come on down, Greg, uh, get the party underway. I'll be uh, ringing a doorbell when the others come in in the order Eddie, Steve, Ryan. Uh, is the party in full swing? Yes, it's a come as Greg Proops joke party. <laughs> ocelot, Ocelot! <laughs> God, you're bald, Clive. <laughs> nice well. Eddie! Hello. Great to see you. Hello. Hi. Can I play on that? This is a bachelor party. Oh, I'm fed up with that now. You... I'm not <laughs> oh, you have fun playing there. Steve-O! Ah. <laughs> hey, you should warn us about that. Whoa. You should warn us about that. That's a big gap. All right, sorry. <laughs> Steve, can I get you a drink? I need a bread roll to hang on to or something like that. A baguette, a baguette. We'll get out of here. You're on the subway. You're on the underground. Yeah. <laughs> You want something? Some yeah. food? Push me, push me. <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> Ryan, this, why all the fanfare? You're, you're in a circus. You're a circus yeah, parade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got this, you've got this. What is this? And you, do you want a lollipop of some kind? You small, bizarre child? Child in the playground. Yes, that's right. You're in the playground. Yes, you're in the playground. Yes, yes. You were there, you were there. You were there. You were there. Yes. Okay, I knew it. Yes. Okay, adding up the points. Oh, no, this is a surprise because adding up the points, Greg and Ryan are this week's joint winners. So well done, Greg and Ryan. Okay, and the, the prize for winning, prize for winning as usual is they have to read the credits in the style of my choosing do it please in the style of two filmmakers pitching an idea to a studio boss that makes sense where you come from and that just uh, remains for me to thank uh, steve frost eddie izzard or greg proops ryan stars me clive and say good night good night <laughs> I love this. I have got chills. I've got chills. We're very excited yes, about Clive this. Clive Anderson very is going to play a character. He's yes. a mean guy, yeah. yet he's kind of soft inside. Right. But he has no hair whatsoever. No, no hair. No hair. hair. It'll be freaky. Yeah. 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 And yeah. Mark yeah. Allen comes. He's oh, got a monster God, no, Mark, thing. He has a thing that comes out. Right out of his chest. Right out of his chest. Right he's not mean. And the no, 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 no. He's nice. He brings the children to wine and balloons. And Deborah Young. Deborah Young. She's the love of this thing. The gravy story. Here's an interesting twist to the whole thing. He's a deep sea Nazi captain, but he flies. And the dead Patterson swoops in and kills everyone. It's a happy ending. <laughs>